Praise the Lord. Praise God, all angels, sun, moon, and shining stars. Praise God from the earth, young and old, men and women. But everyone, praise God's name. For God is faithful and worthy of praise forever and ever. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me twelve brothers from each other. Ten lords of leaping line, ladies dancing, seven swans to sing, six geese are laying. Legend has, that, legend has it that the 12 days of Christmas was written to help secretly pass on the faith in the time of religious persecution. Whether or not that is true, each verse has in, re, been reinterpreted to connect with the teaching of the church and reminds us of the gifts that our true love, God, has given to us. These uh, 12 days are the 12 days between Christmas Day, December 25th, and Epiphany, which is January 6th, when the Magi arrived. Join us as we explore the symbols of our faith to be found in the classic Christmas carol, the 12 days of Christmas. The first day of Christmas, a partridge in a pear tree. Our scripture lesson is from Matthew 23, verse 37. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing. Our lesson is Jesus Christ. A few days ago, we celebrated the coming of the Christ child. Jesus has been born. Emmanuel has come. Today we consider the words of a hymn that you may not have realized was a statement on Christianity. The first gift the singer wants to give is a partridge in a pear tree. This is the most important gift because it is repeated 12 times if we sing the song in its entirety. The partridge, though, represents Jesus. And this is not the first time that Jesus has been likened to a bird. He claims himself to be a mother hen in the scripture we just read. Jesus cares for us like a mother hen, like a shepherd, as our Savior. And we are reminded of his everlasting gift to us, his death on a cross and resurrection on Easter morning, our partridge on his pear tree. The second day of Christmas, two turtle doves. Scripture is Luke 2, 20, verses 22 through 40. When the time came for their ritual cleansing, in accordance with the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. It's written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be dedicated to the Lord. They offered a sacrifice in keeping with what's date in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Lesson, the Old and the New Testaments. Turtle doves make an appearance throughout scripture. It was one of these doves that Noah sent out to see if there was dry land after the flood. 
Their mournful cry has been used as a symbol for, of mourning in Scripture. They are mentioned in Song of Solomon as an indicator of new life because they are migrating species. Doves were offered as sacrifices for those who couldn't afford sheep or goats. They allowed rich and poor alike to worship God. Turtle doves are said to mate for life, and so it is fitting that the author of this hymn uses them as a symbol for Scripture, for the joining of the Old and New Testaments, for the combining of those two books in our one Bible, because the Testaments are to be read together as one continuous story of God's love, of what God has done and continues to do in this world. Christmas, three French hens. The scripture is from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 2 and 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The lesson is gold, frankincense, and myrrh. During this season of Christmas, we are reminded of the three gifts of the Magi, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These unique presents were not random gifts, but demonstrate who the Magi believed this child would become. Gold was reserved for the royal, or the divine, and proclaims the birth of the Prince of Peace, Lord of Lords, and King of Kings. The frankincense is a symbol of holiness and is used in priestly worship, pointing to the ways that Christ sacrificed himself for our salvation. The myrrh invokes bitterness and suffering and speaks to how God came to be with us, entering our lives and showing us how to journey through death and into life. Let us bow our heads in prayer. O oh, gracious and loving God, you are the God of glory. You have made us to experience mystery and wonder and all the amazing joys that surround the celebration of Jesus' birth. From silent night to Sunday morning, we to continue to ponder the wonder of your, your glory and the birth of Jesus, the Word made flesh, the Incarnation. We sing our songs of celebration for the gift of your light to the world, the gift of your love to us, the gift of your life to all who believe. Turn us to translating our celebrations into service, the, the Christmas hope into hopeful actions, Christmas peace into peacemaking, Christmas joy into continuing gladness, Christmas goodwill into acts of goodness, and Christmas greetings into constant caring that your word take flesh in us, your word be, be made manifest through us. In our celebrations, we pray for those who have circumstances depriving them of Christmas joy. We pray for the hungry who must think constantly of finding food for the body. We pray for those who are lonely, who sense their aloneness more this season than any other time. 
We lift to you those who are grieving, who feel the, the depth of loss as they remember past Christmases shared with others. We lift up to you the unemployed who are denied the opportunity to give in this season of giving. As we worship, keep, us, keep a healthy tension in us of both celebrating the good news of Christmas and confessing our failures to care for those for whom it might not be a good time. We pray all of these, all of this, in the name of your Son and our Savior, who taught us this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The fourth day of Christmas, four calling birds. Scripture lesson is John 21, verses 24 and 25. This is a disciple who is testifying to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world would not contain the books that could be written. Lesson is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The four calling birds are said to represent the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which tell the stories of Jesus' birth, life, death, and resurrection. But the concluding verse of the Gospel of John says that these books are not sufficient, but the works of Jesus are so numerous they cannot be contained in books. Indeed, as Christians, we proclaim that the Incarnation means God is loose in our world. The work of Jesus is still being done. The Gospels cannot contain the story because the story is still being written. day of Christmas, five golden rings. The scripture is from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 25 through 27. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. The lesson is the Pentateuch. The five golden rings represent Pentateuch, or the first five books of the Bible. The Pentateuch, or the Law of Moses, is a gift from a God who cares enough about the people to tell them how they can live in covenantal relationship with their God. Rather than walking in confusion and darkness, these five golden rings tell us that God loves us enough to give us a law to follow, loves us enough to show us what is evil and what is good in this world. Christmas. In Genesis 1, 31 
to Genesis 2, 2, it says this, God saw everything that God had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the multitude. multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that God had done, and God rested on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. Eggs are generally the provision of another Christian celebration and often associated with Christmas. But these geese laying eggs represent new life, just like eggs at Easter. There are also six of these geese to represent the six days of creation the days in which God created all that is and was and will be. The number six is important, but, doesn't, but don't discount the geese themselves, after all. In the Celtic tradition, the wild goose is often the symbol of the Holy Spirit, not the more peaceful a dove. These six loud, squawking, excitable ladies represent the beautiful chaos of God's creation and the new life found in Christ. The seventh day of Christmas, seven swans are swimming. Scripture reading is 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 and 5. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. The lesson, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you were really going to buy everything on that list, including hiring drummers and dancers and milking maids per hour, it would run you almost $35,000. The most expensive item by far is the swans. Seven swans, whether they swim or not, will cost you $13,125. How strange then that the seven swans actually represented the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord, gifts that are given freely by a loving God. Maybe it's irony, and maybe it reminds us just how precious these spiritual gifts are. Either way, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are a great deal cheaper and yet more lasting than any swimming swan. The eighth day of Christmas, eight maids a milking. The scripture is from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 3 through 10. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The lesson is the eight Beatitudes. When young maids or unmarried women were asked to go a milking, wedding bells were on the horizon. It was an invitation to join your heart with another and to forever be changed. 
In many ways, the Beatitudes are that same kind of invitation. These eight statements of Jesus teach us how we might love God and love our neighbor in a way that will forever change our lives. The first few Beatitudes remind us that there are circumstances we face in life we might not have any control over, hunger, grief, or oppression. God comes to us in those moments and reminds us we are not alone. But the second half of these blessings are an invitation to share God's love with others. This Christmas, we remember that not only has Christ entered our lives right where we are, but invites us to join our hearts and help change this world. ninth day of Christmas. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. By contrast, the fruit of, the, fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The nine fruits of the Spirit, divine gifts made manifest in human beings, join the dance. Together, they, they dance in and through us, moving our feet, our hands, our bodies, our hearts, and our, to a holy rhythm. We join in the dance and move in um, measures filled with, with loving, humble service. Tenth day of Christmas, ten lords a leaping. Scripture lesson is Matthew f chapter five, verses one, er, verses seventeen through nineteen. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of, or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Lesson the Ten Commandments. The Ten Lords of Leaping represent the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are more than just a list of thou shall nots. They are a sign of who we are, God's people, God's chosen people, people who live differently because of who God is and what God has done for us and what God has promised to us. Just when we say something is written in stone, God intended the Ten Commandments to be a promise that would last forever for all of God's people throughout time. With God's own hands, the tablets were cut. With God's own fingers, the words were engraved. God's love for these people, God's love for us was written in stone.
the eleventh day of Christmas, eleven pipers piping. The scripture is from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came to them and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The lesson is the first 11 faithful apostles. The 11 pipers piping remind us of the 11 disciples who saw Jesus at the mountain after his resurrection and went forth into the world to share the good news of the gospel. They were not considered faithful because they were free from questions or doubt or because they had certainty about where they were going next. These disciples were considered faithful simply because they showed up and then they went out in Christ's name. May we also join these 11 pipers piping as we go out into the world to share the song of Christ's pursuing love. The twelfth day of Christmas, twelve drummers drumming. The scripture lesson is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. The lesson, the twelve points of the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed was composed in the first or second century. It is a statement of faith used by numerous denominations, with perhaps slight variations, as a way of affirming our faith. This creed provides 12 statements of our beliefs about God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love sent to me two turtle doves and a on the third day of Christmas, my true love sent to me three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree.
day of Christmas my true love sent to me. Seven swans are swimming, six geese are laying. Six, he's a lame. 